Because cells have so many different organelles packaged up inside of them, there has to be a way to keep things organized. So if these organelles weren't held in place, um, that, that could be problematic, right? If the ER wasn't next to the Golgi, then how would the vesicles find their way to the Golgi? There has to be a, a means for things to stay organized inside of cells. And so cells do have special structures just for organization and for support um, and for allowing movement. So we're gonna take a look at that next. The cytoskeleton of the cell is a network of fibers, protein fibers, and this does a few different really important jobs. For one, it just provides some support, it kind of right, helps to keep, keep everything um, supported in the places where they're supposed to be inside of the cell. And it also provides sort of like a railway system. These are sort of like tracks um, that vesicles can get shipped along. So it provides a means of transportation inside of the cell. The cytoskeleton um, is made of proteins, protein filaments called microtubules and microfilaments. Those are the primary types of um, filaments that are involved. And what do these do? Let's take a look at the picture over here. So the cytoskeleton is shown in purple. These purple things are all pieces of the cytoskeleton. And what are they doing? They're anchoring to the different organelles. Here's a mitochondria that it's attaching to. Um, but notice there are a lot of bridges like between fibers. So these also anchor to each other. Um, and then they also reach out and attach to proteins in the plasma membrane. So it's kind of providing this really big network um, that all together it provides support for the contents of the cell. These same types of filaments can be used to allow movement for cells. So uh, there are some special cells that are capable of moving and crawling. And um, what happens in that case is these fibers actually get sort of broken down in one area and built in another area. And this allows the cell to sort of crawl forwards in one direction. There are certain immune cells that do that very thing um, in order to, to crawl through different tissues and check for infections that might be there. So that's really neat. Um, what we're gonna do for right now is focus in on something a little bit more simple, just looking at two special structures that provide movement, cilia and flagella. Cilia are fibers that are composed of microtubules also, so same building block material, but these are fibers that project on the outside of the cell. And what they do is they wave back and forth. They're not very long, they're, they're quite short, two to 10 microns, that's not very long at all. Um, we're looking at them in this picture. The green things are the cilia. So what they do is they kind of wave back and forth and they cause the surroundings of the cell to, to move. So the cell stays put, uh, but the cilia make the surroundings move by. So this is a useful thing. A good example of this is in your airways. We have um, the whole lining of the airways has cilia. And what this does is it helps to, um, if you breathe in like some dust or whatever, that dust will get trapped in the mucus. And then the cilia kind of help to wave it back upwards, back up the airways until you can either ha, cough it out or swallow it down. Um, but these cilia are really important for keeping that the airways clean, keeping them maintained nicely. The other one that's shown here, um, these are flagella. So flagella are specialized for movement. They are also made of microtubules, um, but they are longer, much longer than cilia. They're about 200 microns long. And there's actually only one cell type in the human body that has a flagella, and that's the sperm cell. So each sperm cell has one flagella, and this allows the sperm cell to swim and propel itself forward. So the way that this happens, in either case, whether we're talking about cilia or flagella, the way that this happens is by a special arrangement of microtubules. What we're looking at here is a cross section, and we can see sort of cut through the microtubules, um, there's a ring of microtubules around a core of microtubules. And when these microtubules um, slide past each other, that provides like a bending motion. So this causes the whole structure to sort of sway back and forth. So that's how cilia 
and flagella can, can do this, can provide movement.